Well, hello everyone and welcome to our first trailblazing webinar of 2023. Woohoo! Happy New Year, everybody. Yes, come on in. Tell us where you're watching from today or where you're joining us from. I'm so excited to be hosting our first webinar of a beautiful new year. Well, welcome, welcome. Our topic is the 19 must-have competencies for administrative excellence. And we will get to that soon, but first I wanna go over a few logistics with you. Many of you probably know these already, but we spend about 40 to 45 minutes on the educational part of our program. Woohoo, look at you all flying in from all over the world. Yes. <laughs> And you can, we will have a Q&A period, usually about 10 minutes. You can submit your questions anytime throughout the webinar. And then Malia will be pulling those and saving them for later. Or you can wait until the end. You will receive a replay link, which will be really good for today's topic because I have so much to share with you today. And make sure you've got something to take notes on really, really important. Uh, so also, I am really excited. I thought it would be fun to kick off the new year with some giveaways for you. So I went into our storeroom. <laughs> I pulled one copy of each of my books. So throughout, we are going to give these away so make it a little fun too for your new year. So we'll talk about those as we go through the webinar today. I'm so happy you're all here. Well, first, there were 12. Then there were 15. And now, as of January 2023, there are 19. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the essential competency areas administrative professionals must continually grow and develop to be successful in the profession and in today's work environment. Yeah, think about that. From 12, we're up to 19. So what does that tell me? It tells me that one, managers and executives and your leadership are expecting more from the role and really broadening uh, what they expect, which is a good thing. It is. And also that you yourselves are broadening your roles and therefore you are developing skills that you haven't developed before, which is awesome because those are going to keep you going, moving forward, make you marketable, and such. So this is pretty exciting stuff. And while competencies may seem dry, I'm going to make it fun. And I'm going to tell you what kinds of competencies there are. And then I'm going to share with you our proprietary information, our competency model as well. So let's just start walking through this. I'm going to take it a step at a time. And uh, this way, I hope that all of you can keep up. Like I said, I hope you have notes somewhere, uh, somewhere to take notes, I should say. I have the notes, actually. I have many of them today. First of all, let's just start. Well, I'm going to ask you, how many of you know what a competency is? When you hear that word, because I'm sure many of your organizations have competency models for all their employees or maybe job families. And if you do know what a competency is, tell me in the chat, how would you describe a competency? So while you are doing that, I'm skills, yes, what you're able to do, understanding, skills you're proficient in, skill, skill, skill. What else? It's more than skill. Something you need to do to perform, expectations, ability to do something well, being proficient. All right, so let me tell you, a competency in the job world, competency has many meanings. Some definitions relate to the work tasks. So it could be work task related. Results, what are the results 
that are expected. It could be outputs, which sounds a lot like results, but they're a little bit different. Others describe the characteristics of the people doing the work. So knowledge could be a competency area, skills, as many of you mentioned, attitudes, also are competencies that we measure, values, orientations, and commitments also can be included. A hybrid often mixes those two kinds of definitions into what they call an attribute bundle. So you have all these different attributes. Now, what kind of competencies do we talk about when we teach our STAR Achievement course? So I want you to know, by the way, this is all, a lot of this I have been teaching for years in our STAR material, STAR Achievement series material. I have used competencies to identify training needs for administrative professionals in an organization. I have used competency models for coaching work. So these are really, really important tools. But um, the, the different kinds of competencies, as I mentioned to you, are tasks. So we already talked about that, results, so forth. What I didn't mention are what we call superior performer differentiators. Okay, that's a mouthful. Let me say it again. It's a superior hyphen performer differentiators. What does that mean? All right. These are competencies that superior performers have. Star performing assistants. These are what they have and the other workers don't. These competencies usual fo usually focus on people's abilities and skills with roots in intelligence and personality. So that's a real big differentiator because many of you, like many of us in other careers, can have excellent technical skills. That's not a differentiator. You know, if you all use OneNote very well or no Excel or PowerPoint, there's no big differentiator. So the competencies that we use for all our training and our competency model, which you're going to get, I'll tell you about it in a moment, we identified what do these superior administrative professional performers do? What are their actions, attitudes, behaviors, skill sets? And that is the model that we have set. So it's a set of standards that we have used and all of our training actually helps people build to that level. Um, our competency model, you're probably wondering what am I referring to? This is what it looks like, a quick glance. It's several pages. And again, bear with me because I'm gonna walk you through every step of this. But this is what I'm referring to when you hear me say competency model. And so we have captured, like I said, the 19 top core areas. It is based on star performing assistance. So what we're going to do in this webinar, I am going to touch on all 19. I'm going to tell you the main competency areas you need to continually develop and excel in. And I'm going to give you a few little specific highlights under each one. And then as a gift to you, everyone attending this webinar, we are going to give you this. So often people only get this when they attend our training or I do coaching with them. This is just not sitting out there. So that's my gift to you. And I'm gonna tell you how you could use this when you access this and how to build a professional development plan from this. So there's a lot, multiple uses for this assessment. So what we're going to do is um, at the end of the webinar, Brian, there will be a download in the sidebar at the end of the webinar for this model. And then we'll send the assessment to you with your certificate email. Okay. This is a very, very powerful tool. Very powerful. So uh, the other thing I wanted to tell you, 
is within this list, these are, it's a condensed list of behaviors. In other words, out of a, under appointment management, I could probably list 20 different actions that star performing assistants take. But to keep this a little more brief for people, I've picked out five under each main area, and I'm going to highlight one or two for you in each area. It's also what we call in the training world a scaled rating. You see, it's scaled. So it says it's not applicable. You seldom perform this action. You sometimes perform it, usually, or you always do this. And so um, that's how the, the rating itself works. So are you ready? We're going to go through the 19 throughout. We're going to give away some books. And then I'm going to talk to you about how to build your development plan and what you can actually do with this when you receive this assessment. All right, are you all ready to go? Yes, you had your executive completed over six years ago in the conversation for myself. Eval and his was so valuable. That's excellent, Lisa, yes. This is a, a tool to use with your executive and I'm gonna tell you about that later. So the first main competency area, and these are in alphabetical order. So it's not that one is more important than the other. They're all important. The first one, you know well and you do often, appointment management. Now, again, we're looking for differentiators. What do the star performing, top performing assistants do that other assistants don't? So one of the action items in here, and by the way, these all have to be an action that we can measure. And the one that I highlighted to talk to you about is uses a holistic approach to scheduling appointments. We've talked about that. I've talked about that many times, those of you who follow me. And this is very important today when everyone wants to use these apps and calendary and all these other things that they just, oh, just go in, pick a date, pick a time, and okay, we're good to go. But that's not what star performing assistants do. They analyze the calendar. They look at the calendar. They look at what's happening in each meeting. What's the level of stress for that meeting? Has their executive been traveling? Are they going to have jet lag for a day or two? You, a star assistant doesn't just drop in dates. They holistically, they look at last week, this week, and three weeks out. How do all the pieces fit together? So if you do that, good for you. Kudos. You get five stars from me on that one. So the idea is if you were doing this rating and filling out, or when you fill out your assessment, you're going to say, well, first of all, do I do this at all? If you do, are you only doing it sometimes? Usually you do it, or do you always do it? And then what we're going to do later, when you're done with your whole assessment, you're going to pinpoint the twos and the threes, and those are the areas you're going to work on and push forward. Also under appointment management, you've got research, or I have, research and filters information or pre-reads. You selectively pick the information for your executive. So do you see that's a whole another level? You know, a lot of times the meetings are set, but the assistant isn't involved in searching, researching, filtering information, narrowing down pre-reads, highlighting things in pre-reads. Do you see that makes you a star? when you're involved at that level. Now you might be saying, well, my executive doesn't ask me to do that or want me to do that. Well, it doesn't mean you shouldn't jump in because that's what stars do. So um, just remember, even if your executive isn't allowing you to do some of these things I'm gonna talk about, maybe you need to think about how do you inject yourself into those things. And again, these are, these are what will make you stand out. All right, we're going to go on. The second, attitude management. 
And I've been teaching attitude for 32 years, not to have attitude, but how to maintain a positive attitude. But this is a critically important competency area today. So the one I highlighted out of the five that I thought would be best is you focus on self change versus trying to change others. People are going to be who they are and we can't always make people change. But what happens is, and what we teach in STAR is that we sometimes view others as difficult in the workplace or we view them as the dragon you know they may be working in another department and they're not going to change the way they do things well the thing we can do is change our attitude about that person instead of talking about how difficult they are and how they i don't like working with them you know it's to change our attitude change our focus and just realize that while we may not like certain personalities, but everything brings, or every person brings something to the table, to the workplace. And when we start, you know, changing our focus with anything, not just people, events, situations, it can change our whole mood and our ability to be productive and effective. Plus, helps our attitude, right? <laughs> All right, we're going to do a quick book, then I'm going to get to the third one that is really an eye opener, I think, for all of us, although you've heard about it. So Malia, um, the first book is the second edition of Inner Circle Assistance. So it just wrote and published the second edition the end of last year. So Malia, who's our lucky winner? The lucky winner is Karen Swoops. Karen Swoops. All right. Congratulations, Karen. All right, let's go on number three, business acumen. This is hot off the press. We didn't have business acumen in the competency model up until now. I will tell you, though, that the last several years that I have heard assistants tell me that their executives have identified business acumen as an area they need to grow in. We did just say a training on business acumen to our significant power skills series. So it is important for you. Now I highlighted a couple in here. So we have five actually behaviors or attitudes that you're gonna rate yourself on. But, and you could think right now, you can be rating yourself right now as I'm going through these. So under business acumen, believe it or not, one of the uh, star performing traits is you think strategically. So there's tactical thinking, which is pretty much what you do day to day for your typical skills. Strategic thinking takes you at a whole new level. You're looking at all the moving pieces strategically, positioning them. You're seeing how they fit together. So that's an entirely new level to think. And I would challenge you to do that this year, not just be tactical, be strategic. And then the other one that I highlighted under business acumen, um, knows and uses business acumen, terminology, language, such as some examples we gave, and I, I can't give you all the answers right now, but ROI, which probably many of you know, POC, do you know that one? Point of contact. What about COB, FIFO, IPO, ROCE, MBO, right? So B is KPI, yes, COB, well, I said that one. So the idea is you need to be aware of these and the terminology in business. So that's a great close of business. You got it, first in, first out. Oh, you, you are good. What about, I'm gonna test you on another one. What about, CAPEX, C-A-P-E-X. Anybody knows what that stands for? Stands for, <laughs> it's 
excuse me. <laughs> it stands for capital expenditure. So add that to your list. <laughs> All right, good job. Let yes, key is knowing the terminology for your business segment. Thank you so much. You get a star for that. Excellent. You got it. All right, let's go to number four. And this competency area is career management slash professional development, which many of you are doing today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy you're doing this. So the two I chose to talk about, we've got sets performance goals in line with the department or company mission. How many of you are required yearly to set goals that align with your department or the company? Would you let me know? If you do, say yes in the chat. Because I know many administrative professionals are asked to do that as they start the new year, they need to set those goals. And I know that can be very intimidating to you know a lot of assistants if you haven't done it. Yes, yes, look at this. Amazing. So if you haven't had to, if you're being asked to do that and you've never done that, I would definitely research how to set goals because it isn't just a matter of, oh, my goal is to be more efficient at scheduling meetings this year. Not really. Okay. And also within the goals, I'm curious, are any of you required to write your goal as a result? Meaning what should the result be? And then you backtrack of what you have to do to achieve the result. So if you have any comments on that, let us know. The other one under career management. Now remember there's five for each of these. I highlighted seeks advice from mentors and superiors. I have done that my entire career. As an assistant, I always sought mentors and they weren't necessarily administrative assistants. I sought different types of mentors, you know, within the business world. Um, also, I looked to superiors, you know, maybe they were those higher level assistants and I was just starting out. I was kind of newer, fresher in the profession. So I would look to those assistants who reported to the CEO and see if I could go to lunch with them. But superiors were also managers in other departments or executives who I admired. So that's something you should have throughout your entire career, personally and professionally. We learn a lot from having mentors um, and it's never too late to get a mentor or learn from superiors. Let's see, you've got some good things here. Mentors and informational interviews. I love that. Thank you, LaShawn, that's excellent. Five-star idea, excellent. So share your ideas, who are other resources or people you use or seek out for mentors or superiors? Um, let's go on to five is communications. Now communications alone could fill three pages. It's vast. Uh, and interestingly, I've been updating, as I told you, our star achievement program, and um, we're launching the second generation of star achievement. And I've been focusing on the communications piece the last two months between digital communications, social media communications, generational differences, uh, our typical with that we teach, communication styles, catalysts that create problems for communication. It's massive. Again, on your competency model, you're gonna see five of star performing attributes. So the ones I highlighted, how would you rate yourself able to have successful critical conversations with higher positioned individuals. You know, how often do you do that? 
do you are you comfortable with that or are you only comfortable with certain higher level individuals yet you back away from others so if you want to be that star performer you have to develop those skills and lean into those conversations the next one i like understands the diversity and dynamics with the team and tailors communication to meet those needs that's really you know what it's about is tailoring our communications it's emotional intelligence are you paying attention to who the other person is in all ways their personalities their backgrounds their cultures um, and being very cognizant their moods their attitudes how are they feeling in the moment that's bringing emotional intelligence into communications and if you're a star assistant you're going to adapt accordingly even if me you know you don't even it's not just assistants it's star performers in general business people are really smart and sharp at adapting their communications and the tools they use they know that a text is not always the best way i aming isn't the best way to have impact or communicate a message they know they've got to pick up the phone or have a zoom so it's differentiating knowing when to use which tool that's really important all right everyone still with me hanging in there good before we get to number six let's give away another book malia so one of my favorite books because the ideas in this book were contributed by 249 sharp administrative professionals who attended our conference years ago. And they even came up with the name of the book, Who Took My Pen Again? We had a contest and it was very exciting, but this is an awesome book because it was a collaborative effort. And we do have, uh, anyway, who's our winner? <laughs> I love this book. So go ahead and help write it. The winner is Stacy Rendquist. Stacy Rendquist? Rend, R U N D. Rend. You're a little fuzzy today, your voice. Oh, my God. Oh, great. It's but I have my voice back. <laughs> your voice is back, but something's funky going on. <laughs> All right, everyone, are we ready? We still have a lot more to go. We're on number six. We have 13 to go. Six. The competency area is leadership. All right, not surprising, right? So I chose steers outcomes for improvement. How would you rate yourself? You sometimes do it, you usually do it. Steers outcomes for improvement. So to do that, you've got to be constantly looking at what's going on in your workplace and how to streamline processes and how to come up with new ideas and have better methods and steer you know the direction of that and share that with your team members and share those ideas with them the second one to be a leader you have to make tough on popular decisions so think about that where would you apply that? Can anyone think of in an assistance role, what kind of tough unpopular decisions would you have to make? So I just thought of one example that Malia actually has to do is that um, with our conference registrations or world-class assistant, or it could be other courses we have. We do have cancellation policies, just like every other training company or conference, okay? And Malia sometimes will get, you know, somebody's got to cancel or change something and they reach out to her, but it's not within the cancellation policy. And Malia's got to make that tough decision to stick to the policy and communicate that message and it's not always well received to be honest with you okay so think about that when are you going to be the gatekeeper excellent renee you get five stars the meeting juggling the spinning plates bumping colleagues fantastic 
That's an excellent example. Budgets, technology. So do you see, you do have a lot of opportunities throughout the day where you've got to be that tough person. You have to be that leader, correct? So kudos, keep growing in that area and look for other areas you can apply your leadership skills this year. Seven, it's manager executive support. Um, now, obviously, we've written books on this topic, but we had to keep it down to five. So one I highlighted focuses attention on the executive's most important priorities. So I'm sure you're all going to say, well, of course I do that, but I don't see it happen all the time. In other words, what do I mean by that? When I go on, when I would go on site and do coaching work pre-COVID, um, and I would be there for two days observing an executive and their assistant and everything they did and their workflow and how they work together. So many times I would see that executive assistant working on something um, that was important, but then someone else came along or something came in the inbox or something you know, came toward them to do and they dropped the important thing to handle the thing that was just given to them. So you've got to make sure well, one, you have to communicate with your executives regularly, like almost every morning you should touch base. What are your top three priorities? What fires can I help you put out today? It takes two minutes. Malia and I do it all the time. Well, most of the time, I have to say. There are a few times when it's, but we try even for two minutes. So, and if you live in a virtual world, if you're working hybrid, if you're working remote, you've got your work cut out for you. You've got to be a leader. You have to take the initiative and you've got to get your people to cooperate with you because you can only do your job as good as the cooperation you get from the people you support and you deserve that. So, uh, the other one that I have under the manager executive support that star performers do, they are comfortable with uncomfortable conversations with their leaders. So if you had to rate yourself, you know, and thinking about your comfort level when you have to have an uncomfortable conversation. Can you think about times when you dreaded like having to talk to your leader about something, you know, and especially if it's related to, to you and your leader, you know, that they're not giving you information on time or whatever that situation might be, or maybe you need to give feedback to your executive on how things they aren't doing are impacting others in your department or organization or outside people. That's an uncomfortable conversation. Dawn, thank you. Yes, I would believe that every assistant can work on this. I still have to work on that. And I'm a business owner and I'm a CEO, but there's times I have to have uncomfortable conversations. So I think that's the skill we all can work on and lean into and embrace and get better. All right, number eight, you all have had to do this one, manage office technology. And I will tell you, we have some of the technology broken into some other areas. Um, but when you get the assessment, you'll see what some of the differences are. So I highlighted maintains digital files in a systematic manner, right? <laughs> so uh, that's an area I know for us, oh my gosh, the more digital files we have and the more people we have involved in those files, the more difficult it can become. And then we, the other one I uh, highlighted that I thought was a good one, processes updates on smartphone, tablet, and computer regularly and as soon as they become available. So, right, having to keep up on that for yourself and if you help your executive with that as well. Number nine, meeting preparation and implementation. You know, we've always had that in our competency model, of course. But again, what do some of the star performers do? 
So uh, I highlighted two out of five. Knows whether to provide simple or detailed briefing for executive. All right, so depending on the kind of meeting that's going to be held, do you need to just give a highlight view of that meeting or do you need more details? I will also add to that, is your executive more of a big picture thinker or a detailed thinker? So if they're big picture, they may only want those high points. The problem is maybe they need to cover more detail in that meeting and you should provide a more detailed briefing. So that's something you'll have to you know, think about as you look at each meeting and also get to know your leader's style. The next one under here we have after the meeting, follows up with the meeting attendees to coordinate any communication needs. But also, here's a good one. Do you debrief with your executive? So the meetings your executive had yesterday, did you have a debrief today about some of those meetings? How did they go? Are there follow-up items that came out of those meetings? Are there action items that, are, that need to occur? Rarely do executives and assistants have debrief meetings because they're too busy moving on to the next one and the next day and the rest of the week and the to-do list. So I'd really encourage you, if you don't do that, maybe you're going to be, sometimes we do it, usually we do it. Oh no, seldom do we do that. All right, then could you start to see how based on you your rankings, you're going to move yourself up over the year. All right, um, let's do one more. So this is a new one we added because of the last few years. It's meetings dash virtual. So two, there's really five good items in here to rate yourself on, but I chose adept at using virtual meeting platforms features, recording, enabling sharing, monitoring chat, displaying documents, using whiteboards, so there's a lot out there today, isn't there? Because these platforms have become more sophisticated. You know, are you comfortable using them? Uh, do you stick to the same old thing or are you learning the new features that they're bringing along? And then the other one I highlighted, actively participates in virtual meeting management by offering thoughtful suggestions, ensures everyone has the opportunity to speak and the meeting stays on topic. So that's about really being more of a uh, meeting facilitator, but I will also tell you, you could do that anytime in a meeting. You can be that leader. If you see your group and you're in a meeting with 12 people and they start going off a tangent, you can lead them back, get them to focus again, take the lead. All right, are we good? Let's do a quick book, Malia, and then we're gonna keep going. We'll be at number 11. Yes, we are on number 10, Monica, correct. Meetings dash virtual was number 10. I'm super excited to give this book away, although you have got to have your executive read it. It's for executives, but you also should read it to know what we're telling them and how to work with you and build a partnership. Just released last year, we're super excited about this book. Um, Leah, who gets the executive's competitive edge? Did I lose Malia? Where did she go? Uh-oh, I think she's having issues out there. <laughs> I have no clue, you guys. I don't see her. I don't know what's going on. Charlene Kaufman. <laughs> what, are you having trouble out there? I don't there? know what happened. My <laughs> Charlene Kaufman, yay. <laughs> can you talk though? Well, I turned on, I asked you if you can hear me and you said, I think you lost. I, I don't know where you are, but we got to find out because yeah. we have Q and A. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, talking about the technical virtual world. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh, life is never boring at work, right? All right, we're on number 11. 
Again, we have 19 of them. Number 11, office organization. Yes, this is still on the list, you know, but it's different than years and years back when you were in the offices all the time and you had all these paper uh, tools and things around you. So the two I highlighted within this, um, you have a system that allows you for quick retrieval of your files. So first they have to be organized, right? But what's your system to quickly uh, retrieve those? And then I like this one, doesn't, this is new, doesn't have to be pinged to complete tasks or projects because self-directed tracking methods enables meeting deadlines. So that's definitely new. I mean, compared to what we did years ago. So that's important. What tracking method do you use? And maybe you wanna share that with each other in the chat. Like, what do you find to be a good tool to help you? and keep you moving forward and meeting your deadlines. Number 12, competency, essential area, problem solving slash solution oriented. So uh, the one I love on here, knows when to let a problem incubate. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we are working so hard to find an answer, to force the idea that we're not doing, we're not moving anywhere. So what I've learned over the years is you have to know when to just take this thing and put it aside and move on to other things. Let it incubate, let it simmer. It may be two or three days it needs to simmer. But sometimes the more we force it, the less we're going to get our solution or new idea or answer. But if you let it incubate or simmer before you know it, the ideas just come to you more naturally. Does that, I hope that makes sense. And then another one I highlighted manages to find solutions with minimal direction. So again, are you know, are you at that stage in your job or career where you can really uh, find ideas and answers, and you don't need a lot of direction. And sometimes that just takes working with someone and knowing your business protocols and how they make decisions and how your executive makes decisions. But if you've been doing you know, a role for a while or you've been with this executive for a while and you're still running to them, you need to take that on more. All right, number 13 is professional behavior. Yes. It is a rating and we do have executives rate their assistance on this. So what are some of the things, what do I mean? All right, here's one action. Faces new challenges as opportunities versus roadblocks. So again, how would you rate yourself? You seldom do that, you sometimes do that. Oh, usually I do that, you know, so when you're hitting the roadblocks, do you look at it as, oh, this is an opportunity for me to stretch, to learn, to grow. Maybe I've got to reach out to new people who I haven't talked to before. I've got to do research and learn new things, right? And I love that. I actually love that because I learn and grow when I look at a roadblock in that way. Um, the other one I highlighted, accept suggestions for improvement without responding defensively. And sometimes it's hard, isn't it? When you think you're doing a great job and, and then you, you get maybe a little bit of a criticism about it or where they think you should improve, how to improve. But again, if we're star performers, we, we wanna take that in and see if there's a way we can leverage that and grow from it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, here's, an important one now. So this is interesting. The competency area is professional image slash brand. So to give you a little background really quick, for 32, 31 years, we've talked about professional image in our trainings. We've been brought in to teach, to talk about it to employees, how to dress, uh, what not to wear, uh, what to cover up on your body, 
you know, tattoos are not allowed. This hair color isn't allowed. Well, everything's changed in the past through three years. So we're not even going to touch it and get into it unless the company wants us to specifically talk about a level of appearance. Um, we do talk about it. So now really the shift with this and because of people working from home and being very casual, it's all over the place. Even those who are going into their offices, every organization is different. So it's really about brand, branding yourself. So one of them, one of the action items exudes confidence. That's professional image. Do you exude confidence when you speak? If you are walking into a meeting or into a room, do you exude confidence when you're on a virtual training uh, session. Do you exude confidence when you're at a conference with 400 people like we had last year in Vegas and you walk into that room, you walk the hall. So that's part of it. And then, uh, so here's a new piece we added. Maintains the professional presence on social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, your company websites. I get a lot of LinkedIn invites and I'll tell you, I'm not impressed with a lot of people's photos. They don't look like they're a business photo or profile. I mean, you have to watch your brand now on these social media platforms. It, people do form perceptions of us, whether we like it or not, that's the reality. So, we didn't have to really think about that too much in the past, correct? All right, are you good? Number 15, supporting multiple managers. Uh, we did add this to the competency model. So it's interesting way back, uh, I used to talk about supporting multiple managers. And then we kind of got away from it because a lot of assistants were more the one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two. And now, of course, with the last several years and the way things have evolved, there are hundreds of assistants supporting multiple people or even a department, correct? So the two I chose for you for today um, to measure for large projects is able to receive materials and organize them in a way that prevents overload or overlooking segments. So, and I used to do that actually when I was an executive assistant, you know, 40 years back, whatever, and I supported multiple people then, I would take materials in pieces instead of waiting maybe till that whole chunk was given to me. And then, wow, that's overwhelming. As my director would finish a piece, like I, I supported a CFO. And we had all these big quarterly lengthy reports and presentations. As he would do those, he would give them to me so I could keep it rolling. Um, and that's a great way when you support multiple people. Wow, Carla, God bless you. <laughs> that's all I have to say. All right, another one when supporting multiple managers communicates the status of each manager's project in relation to the other projects. So it's not just giving that manager an update, but do you talk about how it works in with the other projects? And again, when I was a secretary 40 years ago, I created a form that where I listed the, the key people I was supporting, I would list their key projects they gave to me when the deadline date was due or, you know, the deadline date. And then I would share that with all of them. So then a manager could see, oh, well, no wonder I'm not getting my stuff back yet or so quick as I thought, as quickly as I thought, because, oh, Joan's got this deadline date for John, and she's got this de deadline date for Marie. So do you see communicating that out to the group, maybe weekly, or if you want to do it every other week, it really helps. All right, let's do another book, Malia, and then we're going to be on number 16, and I got to keep going, so we have time for Q&A. All right, underneath it all, this came after Inner Circle book, 
and it's how top tier executive assistants create a competitive advantage. Second edition. This just was updated and came out the end of last year. So we were really busy last year with books. Malia, who's our lucky winner? Okay, hopefully, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yay. Linda Jacoby. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations, Linda. All right, is everyone ready? Number 16, I know you all can relate to this competency area, task and project management. All right, but when we think about star performance, okay, here's what I've got for you. Shifts attention to moving beyond task work to focus on maximizing the functions within your role. So you're going beyond, again, the tasks. Uh, what I call, what I've called for years, it's a cognitive being. In fact, Inner Circle book is about that. You're a thinking being. You're not working on autopilot. You're not a robot. So if all you do is churn out tasks all day long, well, good for you, but you've got to go beyond that. You're not just a task doer. You're a cognitive, intelligent being, and you need to use that. And by the way, something I'm going to share with you soon this year, I think, I've been really looking into and playing around with artificial intelligence. Ta-da! Did you hear that? Yes. And I'm going, I really want to talk to you about how you work in tandem with it and what you need to do so you're not replaced by it. Now that I've experienced it, I know how to talk to you about it. So look for that on this year's webinar agenda. Uh, the next one, number 17. Oh, sorry, under the project management, appropriately, appropriately aggressive in accomplishments of tasks required to ensure success. All right, number 17, teamwork. All right, I got to keep going. I've run it out of time. Um, identifies and bridges communication gaps across teams and generations, respecting culture and diversity. We know this is a huge, huge, huge topic everywhere in our world, personally and professionally. And so we added that. We've always had teamwork, but we added that star performing behavior where we accept each other as we are. And we learn how to work with and communicate and collaborate. All right, I'm going to go to the next two, number 18, technology skills um, incorporates graphics, charts, or images to enhance the visual appearance of communications or documentation. So something else I've been reading a lot about is um, how visual really helps us retain a message instead of having just a lot of content. So think about where can you incorporate some type of charts or graphs or visuals to communicate your idea. The other thing we remember a visual, a visual. So I've got a visual here that I've had around for years. Yes, it's a wooden egg and it's got a little dragon on it as well. And in one of our STAR programs, we talk about eggs and attitudes. And we have real eggs I bring to the class and we decorate them and we talk about our attitudes. And so students have never, ever forgotten the egg. 20 years later, they'll talk about eggs and attitudes. And they remember then my attitude is fragile. My attitude is delicate. I need to take care of it. So do you see visuals are powerful for retention? Yes, it is beautiful. My students gave me that. All right, number 19, are you ready? Time and energy management. Here, that's the new word, energy. We've been talking about time management for, I don't know, 100 years <laughs> or more, but today it's about energy management. If you don't have the energy, it doesn't matter how much time you have. If you fizzle out and you don't have energy, you're not going to get your stuff done. So effectively manages energy and stress, stress levels for optimum sustained performance. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, so that's really important this year. Focus on your energy. 
management. So that means sleeping, you're the food you eat, getting exercise. If you're working at your desk all day, you're working from home all day, get up every hour, whatever it is you need to do. All right. Oh my gosh. We are, <laughs> I know I said 10 minutes for questions, everybody, but we may not make 10 minutes. Really quick though, we have one more book. And then, um, so Greatest Administrative Secrets Revealed is still also one of my favorites. That was one of my later books. So it's newer. <laughs> All right, Malia, who gets that book? That book goes to Lisa Marie Cook. Okay, excellent, Lisa Marie. So let me tell you a couple of really quick things about what to do with this development plan, because in case you have to get off, I mean, I'll stay on five more minutes seven more minutes if you want for to do go through questions. Um, but what I wanted to tell you about, so when you fill that assessment out, when you work on it, you want to, um, based on your ratings, you know, cause you'll go through and you'll circle these based on your ratings, identify your top three competency areas there that you really want to focus on and a lot of times you're going to see it because of how you rated yourself and i'm only saying three you don't need to do five you start with three and you make that your main focus for the next 60 90 days okay then seek out the training or the resources the tools the blogs whatever that are going to help you grow in that area and develop but you know what you have to skill practice you just can't read you have to actually do these things if you're going to develop it and then a great idea and we do this often is to have your leader complete this you can make a copy you are allowed to make copies of this and you can have your leader or most you know your immediate people it's so great because they see things you don't see and you could have a great conversation. Are you meeting their expectations? And a lot of times too, they see excellence in you that you don't see. So those are the steps you could take when you get this assessment tool. And then a couple of times you could go back mid year and rate yourself again. Are you growing in the areas you identified? You can build your, like I said, build your training plan around what you learn about yourself. So, um, Malia, I'm going to do, I know people have to head out, so, but I'm staying on. If you have questions, I want to take those really quick for those of you that have to leave. Quick announcements. Our world-class assistant designation course starts March. I'm teaching this round. Uh, early bird is extended to January 31st, and you could save $300. Um, we've identified our enlightened virtual event, mid-year virtual event for June 15 and 16. Our 30th year annual conference is on the move now. We've got about nine outstanding speakers booked. And then in February, I'm doing two free webinars for you. Two. One is on February 16th with my guest, Alexandra von Tiergarten. She's district president at Robert Half, the world's first and largest specialized talent solutions firm. And then on February 24th, I'm going to pick a, a great, awesome topic for you. All right. So anyway, let's take some questions. If you can stay on till uh, five after, please do join in the conversation. And if you have to leave, thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. Oh, we had wonderful attendance. And I'm going to have lots of trailblazing webinars for you this year. So make sure you come. All right, Malia. OK. Nikisha would like to know if you could please give an example of aligning your goal with your company's goal. Aligning your goal with your company's goal. So an e example, I guess I'm thinking of this because of our company goals and our values are about learning and development and continually growing in excellence. So Malia then would align goals of thinking about what kind of learning does she need to uh, add to her agenda this year um, so that she's that learning employee, let's say. 
Um, I'm trying to think of another one with a company. I'm trying to think of actually some of my own companies that I've worked with, but some of their goals are. If their goal is to be the number one in their industry, um, the goal I would have, or, or yes, the goal I would have is I would help give my executive ideas about competitors and other organizations and maybe how we stand out that I would give that information to my leader because as a leader, he has to help the company maintain a competitive edge. So my goal would be to learn some of the competitive differences and where we have an edge and feed that to my leader. So my role is the research and providing info. Okay, great. Megan would like to know if you have any suggestions for helping an incredibly independent executive learn to let go of her scheduling, <clears throat> pardon me, of scheduling her own meetings. I've been successful in getting her to hand many tasks off, but she does not want to let go of that calendar. Yeah. I don't believe she thinks I'm incompetent, but thinks she prefers to handle her calendar on her own. Which really want to do is uh, and I understand that it's that control we want our calendars. Um, what I mean, definitely, I would have a conversation of her try to find out what her concerns are mm -hmm. about letting her calendar go. Is she concerned you're you're not going to follow through on all the pieces? I mean, until we really know what it is, it's hard to tell you what to do. And you could have a very nice conversation and that I really, really want to help and take this over for you because even though you might think it's two minutes here and two minutes there and four minutes there to schedule your appointments in one week, you've actually burned up, you know, six hours of scheduling and rescheduling. Now, what could you do with six hours that would really impact our business in the bottom line? So, um, so that that's just, I know, a quick answer. Uh, there's definitely more to it, you know, in showing them the benefits of you scheduling and prevents embarrassment and double bookings and the time you can save. So you'd really focus on the benefits. And then just ask her to try it for three weeks. Not a lifetime commitment. That makes them nervous. So if you just say, please, can we try this? Can we give it a try for three weeks? Then let's talk about it. And if you want to take your calendar back, great. In those three weeks, you then need to prove to her you can manage it really well. Yay. All right, let's do one more. Okay, Mara wants to know, how do you work on your confidence? How do I work on my confidence? How did you work on your confidence? How did I? Oh, wow. It took a lot of work <laughs> <laughs> over all the years. And I still, there are still different times I have to work on it depending on a situation. But I, I worked on it by um, a combination. Body language, like really setting my my body in a way that it gives me confidence. Like instead of sitting like this, that doesn't feel very confident. But when I lift myself up, um, even if I'm doing virtual, you know, like I am now, that gives me it just it feels different. It's the physiology of our bodies. Um, it, talk. It's our tone. So if we you know if we talk in a soft voice or low and yeah sometimes you have to fake it till you build that up the words you use the other thing that really gives you confidence is when you're learning about a lot of different things knowledge gives us confidence so when you are aware of things you know about things you can talk more confidently about them doing things i didn't want to do I mean, getting up and starting to speak. I was petrified when I started speaking and it wasn't easy and I would get sick to my stomach and I had to keep doing it over and over and over until it became comfortable for me. And like now you could see I don't stop talking. You can't get me to be quiet. <laughs> so um, assertive learning about assertive communication. I would Google that, do the research on that. And you'll learn some strategies there. And then maybe practice with some people who you know really well in terms of the script. What would you say? How would you say it? And then, yes, well, you could take Toastmasters too. 
Uh, all right, one more. We still have a thousand on. Do we offer book bundle discounts for your viewers? Oh, Erica, good question. Um, I think I'd have to divert to Malia or Brian on that. Yeah, I don't. I, is Brian around? Maybe on the shopping. Brian is uh, here. Oh, I don't know if he's on. Okay, Brian said we don't have a book bundle discount, but I can give you a discount code. Email me at Brian B for Burge at OfficeDynamics.com and let me know what books you're interested in and I will send you the code. Oh boy, Brian, look out. <laughs> <laughs> Here come the emails. Okay, everybody, be offered. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Brian. And yes, Karen's got also really quick uh, that we have some great articles and things on calendar management. I forgot we also have great downloadable ebooks on calendar management. Um, all right, what are your questions? One more. I keep saying one more, okay. but one more, and then we for sure will let you go. Okay, I have one more. Um, Allison would like to know how do you bridge the gap with someone who's arrogant and thinks they know everything? Um, they won't get on the same page as the rest of the office and buy into the process. Oh, I don't like people like that. <laughs> That's why we don't have people like that here. No, we don't have people like that. But uh, I will say, I was just thinking it's star achievement, how we talk about Edward Expert, how he oozes his authority and how smart he is. And so the, the one of the tips that are in the workbook, it says to say to Edward, Edward, I am just amazed at how much you know. You are just so intelligent. And you say it with a smile. <laughs> so you like acknowledge, oh, it's just amazing how, you know, smart you are about everything. <laughs> if, you know, when somebody has that, a lot of times it's lack of security. They're insecure. So, Truthfully, I just go about my business. I continue to be my, myself, my pleasant self. I don't run away from those people. Uh, it's their problem. It really is. All right, we do have to wrap up. I know many of you have things to do. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to make it a great year. All right, everyone. Bye.